So me and a couple Kano buddies of mine just got back from PTLA weekend and we may have accidentally found the best deck in the format. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the list that we took to the PT slash calling, talk about the bodge tech specifically, then share the guidelines we created to help you to be able to do the same thing against all the KOs you verse. And then I'm gonna end off with a rated CC gameplay with live commentary of me performing the plan in real time. So let's get into it. So this was my deck list going into the weekend. I think Juju, Gray, and myself were each around three cards different from each other on our overall 80. So where I was running two Cindering Foresights and two Nourishing Emptiness, they were instead running one Nourishing plus three Yellow Spindle or Snapbacks, if I remember correct. They wanted to run more aggressive options to hedge into the potential Katsus and Azaleas that we were expecting at the tournament, whereas I actually ran a Cindering main board expecting to lose a percentage point or two going into the aggro matchups, but instead I would gain a significant advantage in both the prison matchup and also in the mirror match so I could actually beat them. <laughs> I didn't tell them about that. But besides that, pretty stock standard list. I won't go too deep on it because I did make a Kano deck tech before the weekend, but now let's get into the meat of the video with how to stack KO. So pretty standard 60 with seven defensive cards in Fate for Scenes, Oasis, and Sink Belows respectively, and leaving the E-Pots as the only zero blocks left in the deck because it's really tight on if you can actually make it to your stack or not. So we can't afford even one turn of getting caught with too many zero blocks in our hand. But as a guideline to learning the strategy, we have a couple rules for the matchup like number one is you need a four spell line combo to kill minimum. And three of which must be a multiplicative effect like a wildfire, blazing or a flare. Now, a key thing with this rule is that you need four, but you would prefer to have more if they give you space to stack more. But having this rule gives you good direction for an in-game example of something like if you had to choose between blocking for three with a wildfire or taking three so that you can stack it. So the first question I would ask myself in that type of scenario is, well, what's my combo so far? And if I only have two multiplicative spells there, then I'm happy to trade a little bit of life now to stack that wildfire and then just completely block out for the rest of the game. Or if I already have three and maybe I'm starting to leak more than I want to, then I'll just cash it in for three life, wait for a different turn, and hopefully stack something else that won't cost me as much life, if that makes sense. And then the second rule is you need a minimum combination of five potions in play plus tomes in stack. So this is because our minimum needed stack requiring around 18 resources. And this rule also has the same thing as the multiplicative spells with examples like, say we already have three tomes in stack, then I'll lean towards putting potions into my stack as resource cards under tomes if I need to get there faster, et cetera, et cetera. And so having these understandings of what we need in stack at any moment will make sure that we don't both die before we reach stack by maximizing our blocks while still being able to kill with said stack. So yeah, it's a really tight rope you have to walk down, but once you get the hang of it and learn the nuances of the matchup, it becomes 100% replicable whether they know that you're stacking them or not. But I have a VOD here with commentary to show exactly what the plan looks like in action, along with my thought process throughout the match. Also, I have many more in-depth VODs with commentary on my Patreon, not only into this specific matchup or game plan, but into literally every matchup. So if you enjoy this content or feel like you actually learned something and want to learn more, I'd recommend checking that out. But let's get into the game. All right, we've got another KO. Stack into this motherfucker, try to explain my thought process and such. Uh, this is a post draw my LL list, so I've got yellow sinks I want to test. Also want to test how good boom is in stack as opposed to other options. So far, both of these cards have been overperforming. So pretty happy with their slots so far, but yeah, just going to continue to keep my eye on those. Got tunic, got bodge. Choose to go first. And yeah, that seems pretty good. Interesting choice that they choose out like that. I guess it makes sense if they want AB1, then they can keep the, uh, whatever the arms are called, against like Vincent or Viscera. Uh, but yeah, so we're just gonna do a buffer of three cards. Uh, I usually hate doing buffers, but that's when you have rags, 
When you have balance of justice though, you actually prefer to have buffers because you can't just change one of your reds into a blue. So you actually don't mind setting up the blue buffers there. And then, oh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Oh shit, sorry. Should probably try to pay attention here. <laughs> this, this. Don't want to arsenal the wildfire. <laughs> okay, there we go. Buffer, buffer, buffer. Also doing memory palace. So maybe I'll somewhat explain it as we go. But yeah, so I've got a multiplicative there. Here, I don't mind just taking two. And just sinking. Actually, I don't mind blocking like this as well. Because if they go bare fangs, I'll consider uh, going into the next thing. So nice, block five. So bare fangs. Let the draw discard happen. Um, no agility. So. I guess if I pop it for a three block, it's only getting two block anyway. So yeah, let's not pop it. We'll just block like this. And now I stack. So yeah, as I was saying about the memory palace or the mind palace, yeah, mind palace, you kind of just uh, separate a room that you know about into segments, like you number areas within it. And then you just imagine that you're putting what you want to remember in those segments. So like multiple cards. So. For me, my room is, well, it's just my room, slash my like mini house apartment condo thing. I don't even know what to call my room, but mine is, so I'd have three blues at my door and then in my kitchen, which is right next to my door, is wildfire flare tome right now. And yeah, doing this just helps a lot when you actually need to remember, don't ask me why the fuck it works, but it just does, so. Yeah, I think it took me like two days. I just like created, I drew out my, my like house layout, like I even did it on here. I just went like bang, bang, bang. And then like, this was my door, this is my kitchen, here's my bathroom, this is where I am right now, my computer. There's the wall separator. I've got like a mat here with another wall, another wall. And then I just like numbered it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I just put like three to four cards in each. And then I don't know. Yeah, like I said, I don't know why the fuck it works, but it does. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've got three blues at the door. Then I've got the wildfire flare tome in my kitchen. And it's going to be blue on my mat. Um, I think I will banish this. I've already got two multiplicative spells in my stack, so I only need just a random spell and then maybe one more multiplicative like these ones. So no rush, I can like greet it, if that makes sense. Just like banish this so I'm one extra towards my stack rather than keeping it there to add it to my stack, but it might get awkward because it's a tome then blue so I want another blue before I want the blazing. So essentially I could keep it there to put it in my stack, but it would probably cost me life is what I'm trying to say. Now, smart to play the pulping when he's got the agility. So the sink won't just shut it down, unfortunately. I will still sink it though. Uh, always want to use your arsenal D-reacts early in the chain. Like pretty much that's a golden rule just to play around sand packing and CNC's when they come later. Um, and now it's blue, blue on my mat and then perfect. There's a wildfire. So looking to sink this wildfire. Um, yeah, so I'll just sink here. Sink here, so we lose a point of value here, but we get to turn this into a blocking card. So we get that value back, really, if that makes sense. And then swinging for five, sure. Happy to block three, just keep your life total high. But yeah, so on my mat is Gaze Gaze Wildfire. 
Ooh, don't pass. And like, yeah, as you can see, like, they just can't kill you. They have a hard time actually killing you. I say that, but there's a pulpin coming at us, so I'll block here. Yep, big turn from them, and we took four damage. And also their next turn is not set up, and we don't have to dilute our stack. So yeah, game's going very good. So it's blue, blue, wildfire. We can look to stack this as well. You usually want a combination of five pots or tomes for your combo turn, minimum. Like you want six. If you have six, you're like set. But yeah, so if you can get three pots, you need two tomes in your stack. And since we've only got one, I'll try and look to put this in the stack. Uh, yeah, just using those as rough frameworks for uh, well, like having this knowledge, it lets you determine what you should do with a purpose, if you know what I mean. So like, say I already had another tome in my stack, I can look to do something else with this tome as opposed to taking damage to crucible it. Maybe I can take damage to try and arsenal it uh, for the life gain and to ramp towards my stack, or I can just block with it because I don't need the tomes anymore. So like, see how kind of shows you what to do with your hand when you have these rough guidelines in the back of your mind so yeah nice they have a blood rush but they pitch the red which is a good sign for us pitch another two reds please damn it um but this is for six happy to just block six like this first maybe i should have cracked bodge there but i'll crack it now punish if it's a sink it is not a sink um so this is coming in for a bit of damage. We've got two wildfires and a flare in our stack. I think I'm going to just block and save life. Definitely gonna block with this. I know that much. Do I want to take five down to 17? Or do I wanna stay on 19 and stack this? So no agility token for them next turn. Makes me lean towards stacking it because there's a chance that their hand just whiffs. So I'm gonna do that. So do note, two blazings are gone. Probably wanna to look to stack the third one, if we can. Or just arsenal it before we get to stack. Uh, but yeah, so pitch the crucible. So it was gaze, gaze, wildfire on our mat, and then in my bathroom is tome. Um, so this is pretty perfect. I'm going to play this in response. I like playing the Cinderine when blues are also hits, if that makes sense. So right now I can bottom blues because we'll go under my tome. I can bottom like combo pieces because I can go tome, combo piece, then my blues. So like everything's a hit, that's not a react. And so perfect. Look at that, we just get to put two to the bottom. Um, I'll keep this on the top. And I am going to sink this. So I'm fortunate they didn't. Uh, yeah, it's unfortunate they didn't have a off turn like we wanted them to. But what can you do? Still going to be fine. These yellow sinks, uh, the sink effect is just too good. Every single time, if they're a fate or like just another defensive card, I'd block, but then I still have to take the leak damage to keep this card to pitch the crucible rather than just block while I'm doing my thing. Um, is there merit to Kanoe now or in my own turn? I guess I'll just do it now. No, 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 let's, let's let this happen, I guess. Oh wait, there's a cindering effect. So maybe if I Kano into a dart and then it's two damage, which in the grand scheme of things probably doesn't matter, but okay, so this one we might need to greed and hold on to. It's so pretty unfortunate how th the three blazings lined up. Just that all awkward times. Um let's think. So I have wildfire, wildfire, flare, my stack. We have three tomes. I'm heavily considering 
banishing this. <laughs> but I think it's a little bit too greedy. We'll just keep it. Yeah, this is nice. Okay, bodge with a might token, sure. Was checking if they had an agility token. We've got Tunic for this Oasis. So we kept it here, but I'm probably gonna have to block with it. That's why I was considering just blocking with it before. So we have two wildfires in our stack, right? So we don't need this one. Yeah, because if I just banished this, then I'm just closer to stack and I'm probably still gaining my three life anyway. Um, interesting. So this will come in for seven. I think I just tunic oasis it. Actually, I should just keep my tunic and just pitch the blazing because I'm going to pitch the crucible anyway. And this hedges me for if I draw into my other oasis next turn to keep the tunic up. So, yep. Overall, on that blood rush turn, just taking two damage all up. If you count the oasis life gain. So, yeah, pretty good. And we also got to stack that blazing. So, it was... We did get two blues under that tome, right? Tome sunk, drawn to the blue. And then kept the for our turn, Kano'd. Uh, on this turn, right, was when we did it. This sunk it. Oh, wait, no. So there is a blue, then blazing. Um, so let's think real quick. Where are we at in our stack? Because we're very close. So we are three at my door, three blues, flare wildfire tome, gaze, gaze, wildfire, tome, blue, blue, tome, blue blazing is where I'm at right so that should be 16 let me just count uh, so 3 6 9 10 no, no, 12 and then 14 so 14 plus 2 is 16 Plus four is 20, 21 from Banish, 21 plus 23 is 44. So that's my deck count, is 44. Um, so here I'm just going to block, block. So yeah, 44. Got to just try and keep my life total high. Taking four is pretty scary. Pretty unfortunate hand there. So we're up to 48. There's the Oasis for this tunic. Also some blues as well, which is nice. So 48. Um, sinking one of these blues will put me to 49. And then it'll be blue, blazing blue under that tome. So they showed us a swing big, probably don't have a go again enabler here, which is obviously nice for us because they have used a lot of them. I think they should have two more or maybe a little bit, two or three more. Um, so yeah, we're on 48, right? So. Let's just use this tunic and oasis. Four, so that box seven. I'm also gonna just sink. Because if we draw into a blue here, I can just Kano it to put it under that tome as well. So nice. Uh, so 49, this will put us to 50 if we can banish uh, non react. Yep. So 50, so under that tome is tome blue, blazing blue, blue. So I need to keep one of those buffered gazes instead of just tome, toming into the two blues. 
Got to try and remember that. So we're at 50, this is 54. Pretty down to the wire, but yeah, I was going to say they didn't make a agility last turn, so probably going to be another off turn for them. Um, so 54 is what I said, right? Yeah, we're at 50. This is 54. This will be 55. That's kind of perfect. This will be 56 if we bottom this. Do this goes up to 57, 58. 58, yeah. And then 58, drop to, we want to drop to 63 because there's a three card buffer. So we'll just ask all this flare. So I do need to do this, right? So this put us the 58, Kano 59, drop to 63, which is the three buffer. So if we counted that correct, these were the buffers, right? I do think I remember double ether arc. So yeah, I think we're there. Um, and yeah, so he's dead. <laughs> so you can see it's very tight. Like you have to run the bodge because we had five life because of the bodge. Um, you could even argue that I only got here this game specifically because of the yellow sinks. So yeah, lots of things have to line up kind of thing, but I say that, but I feel like they high rolled quite a bit. Like they didn't have an off turn until the last two turns. They ended up running out of gas, but yeah, that's just pretty much what happens. So that's what the purpose of the bodge is though, is to pretty much, uh, what's the word? Like it's for when the KO or the brutes in general high roll. Like that's when you need bodge. So technically you can stack into these KOs with just rags, which is like what we first discovered. But like if they high roll you or like our consensus was if they do an early blood rush, then you just lose if you get rags. But the bodge actually saves you from it. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Um, right, enough explaining. So it was gaze, gaze, wildfire, tome, blue, blue, tome, blue. So I might not actually be able, I might just do, uh, home buff draw and just draw two here because if I Kano Kano then I can't because I know the tome in my bathroom is a one cost tome so I can't actually afford it so yeah I need to just draw here and then Kano into the wildfire Kano into the tome then it's tome blue blue then it's tome and then this one we go buff draw. Then I'll just shoot this for six. I won't do it to seven with the crucible, just to play around no fear or oasis. They don't have it. Um, Cause yeah, pretty much if a wildfire hits for two, they're just dead. Like it doesn't even matter on when you're pitch stacking. Oh wait, we can do the math thing. So my combo is wildfire, wildfire, flare, flare, blazing. Okay, sorry, Seth. Uh, so wildfire, wildfire, flare, flare, blazing. So there's one blazing, which it equals base equals two. So this is base two plus one, so it's three. This is base two plus three, so it's five. Oh wait, which buffs into that as well. So it's eight, I think it's eight. And then this is the base times two minus one. So it's three uh, plus the middle two. So three, 11, 14, and then this is 28. So one point of damage from my wildfire is worth 28 damage from that first one there.
Uh, don't know if I got that right though, so Gray's gonna have to hit me up if that was right or not. <laughs> but yeah, so this one's for eight now. So it should be the blazing. Let me just shoot this. I can say yes. So even through AB 8 billion, AB 3, AB 3, AB 1, still dealt 20 trillion damage. 101 damage. <laughs> Good game. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, you can stack any KO. This guy even had extra go again attacks with the wild rides and such. It's actually easier to stack the KOs with no fears and Oasis because they stuck like stumble more often as well. But like, as you can see, even like if they have the godlike draws, if they stumble once, I mean once, then we get there. And even if they don't stumble once, you can still like potentially get there depending on how your draws lined up. So yeah, we banished that early blazing. I don't know if it, it, it was a mistake in hindsight, but I didn't know I was gonna draw into the sink that would have like effectively stacked it. Um, if I'm remembering that turn correct, but yeah, so lots of lots of things didn't line up for us. Uh, KO also had things line up very well for them. Still get the stack, still just blow them up, still just piss easy. So, <laughs> but yeah, hold on, let me. I'm pretty sure that combo math was right. One point from Wildfire is 24, and so if the AB3, it's three times 24 or something like that. All right, I'm done explaining. My head hurts. Goodbye. <laughs>